Hello and welcome to the Moncast. A podcast where we watch Pokemon and Digimon in tandem and discuss the similarities and differences that they share. My name's Sam. And I'm Stevie. The score currently stands at 13.11 to Pokemon and this time we're watching episode 25, Primate Goes Bananas and Princess Karaoke. The first episode we are watching this time is Primeape Goes Bananas. Ash and the gang are heading along a rocky road when, out of nowhere, a monkey appears and steals Ash's limited edition poker hat. Suddenly, Team Rocket appear to steal Pikachu, and James kicks Mankey out of the way, causing it to evolve into Primeape. The rest of the episode is spent running away from Primeape and trying to not lock into its eyes until Ash remembers he's a Pokemon trainer and attempts to catch Primeape, only succeeding when Charmander uses Rage, a move Ash didn't even know it had. Once Primeape is caught and conveniently blasts Team Rocket off, the gang suddenly realise that they are right next to Celadon City because why not find some way to advance the plot in the quickest way possible? Is that a problem? No, not really. It's much better than them walking for five episodes. I suppose. There's lots of time jumps in this. Like we've just had in the last what two episodes three episodes ash went from saffron city to lavender town the next episode they're back in saffron city and now they're in celadon city speed running it you got the running shoes well you're calling it quite quick but ash has got like four badges what 24 episodes whereas the digidestined got eight crests in like five episodes i suppose it's much more difficult in pokemon to gather things i'm looking at how long it actually took them to get everything seven episodes to get all the crests and so far it's taken 24 episodes of pokemon to get four badges and eight pokemon oh yeah eight pokemon eight pokemon and a haunter if you count the haunter i don't think we do okay so big question i have to ask now so do you hate primate yes why because it's bad and also it's the first one to be caught since butterfree got outcast written off exiled also it's just annoying in what way? It's just going to be really annoying whenever it turns up and disobeys Ash. It's supposed to be funny because it's like, haha, Ash can't control the primate and it won't be funny. It'll just be annoying. There's already some salt here. You don't get kicked in the face and then evolve. It's not how battling works. Uh, excuse me. Abra just evolved for no reason. Sabrina was just like, evolve now because that's a move that exists. Well, that's Sabrina. Sabrina's just all over the place. But in the context of the games, you don't take damage and then get stronger mid-battle. You win a battle and evolve afterwards. But this isn't the game, though, is it? You just gotta reach for that outrage you do. You're just like, ah, he's got a weird face. It's annoying. Okay, I quite like Mankey. I'm not as big a fan of Primate because Mankey's kind of adorable, but I think they're both kind of cute. I did like Mankey. Mankey's fine. Mankey's cool. Primate isn't. Because Primate got caught. That's how it works. So the episode starts off with Professor Oak, which is a little bit different because the gang aren't walking somewhere or doing a thing. It starts off with Professor Oak and he's got Ash's Krabby with him. And it dawns on me that Krabby probably has more of a relationship with Professor Oak than it does with Ash. It got caught and then sent to the lab. So that means that Professor Oak has got a bigger relationship with this Krabby than Ash does. I like that Krabby's, like, even though it's Ash's Pokemon, probably doesn't care for Ash at all. I liked just everything with Professor Oak. We got to see some of the Pokemon life that was around his lab. And that was cool. We see quite a few species that I don't think we've encountered yet. And it's just like, yay, Pokemon are living creatures. That's cool. <laughs> and then we get the report from Professor Oak on how all of Ash's rivals are doing better than him. Which always makes me happy. I like to hear how Ash is a failure. Well, he's always he's supposed to be the underdog, isn't he? He's supposed to be the one who's not doing the best, even though he wants to be the best. Because if he achieved everything easily, it wouldn't be a good show. He's not an underdog, he's just a loser and an idiot. And he gets things given to him, given to him that much that in one in the last episode, he's like, did I earn this badge? And everyone's like, yeah, just go with it, it's fine. The universe keeps taking pity on you, just go with it. It's amazing though, after that conversation, when he's like, okay, I need to catch more Pokemon because I suck. He gets so incredibly excited, just like, whoa, it's a Pokemon! It's like he's never seen one before. One thing I want to talk about is how Ash seems to reset every episode. I think you've mentioned it in previous episodes, but he doesn't seem to develop as a character. Like when he caught Krabby, 
that was the last time people said to him, you know, you're not really catching any Pokemon. And he ran away to go and catch a Pokemon, caught one, got excited by it, and then that's it. And he hasn't caught any more since. He had an opportunity to catch Haunter, but he didn't catch it. He had an opportunity to catch any of the ghost Pokemon, but didn't. He nearly caught Jesse. Can I be honest? I actually enjoyed that episode a lot more than I enjoyed the episode after and the episode before it, the ones with Sabrina. I liked the one before it more. You do? I liked the hype it built up, even though it it then failed. I'm not happy with the payoff but i like that middle episode because it's kind of cute ash hasn't had that drive to catch any pokemon before doesn't seem how to have acted upon it and then out of nowhere he sees this monkey and the monkey steals the hat and it's amazing he gets so excited whoa it's a pokemon monkey's just this little troll monkey is cute and then they do the thing what are they eating they're eating donuts oh yeah the definitely donuts they're quite clearly rice balls they're the donuts they're not but i don't know whether it's because i noticed that they're not because when i was younger and i said that they were donuts me being what nine ten at the time i was like oh my god look at these really cool looking donut things they look pretty cool and then as i got older and i was watching i was realizing no this is rice it's quite clearly got rice there they're not donuts rice balls also known as donuts apparently they mention donuts a lot brock calls them donuts twice in one sentence every time they call them donuts it's just hilarious Every time they call them donuts, I'm like, people would understand if it's a different type of food. You don't have to call them donuts. Their brains won't just explode. What are these things? Ah, oh, mother, mother, what is this? What is the ball of rice? Pokemon isn't set in America. Ah, oh, what's happening? As their tiny childlike minds explode. So after Brock has his little spiel about donuts and how they're donuts and everybody loves his donuts, they're the best donuts ever. A monkey appears and I immediately realise I actually adore monkey. Monkey is an adorable Pokemon. It reminds me of when you're a little kid and you can't draw properly and you just draw a circle with a face and just attach stick arms to it that's what prime ape and monkey are monkey shape monkey is adorable it's got a happy little face it's most adorable when it takes ash's hat yeah this pig monkey pokemon what are pigs and what are monkeys why is it called a pig monkey pokemon if, if pigs and monkeys don't exist in the pokemon world wouldn't it be called a tepig chimchar pokemon or something no because there's only 150 species it can't be a, a monkey monkey pokemon because monkey is already a pokemon which is a pig and monkey and that is essentially what they've done to make the pokemon they've taken a pig and taken a monkey and just stuck the two together not really to great extent it's more just a monkey with a pig nose but it's adorable and i, I really enjoy it so Brock gives it a quote-unquote donut and Ash is like ah oh, Pokemon catch it catch the Pokemon and he throws a Pokeball and then he catches Donut Chew and I remember this scene and I remember when I was young and I remember genuinely laughing at it because he just opens the Pokeball and then just Mwah. there it is there's this little rice ball stuck in a Pokeball and I'm like that's really adorable that's really cute how it's not just as simple as finding a Pokemon and catching it monkey's like no I don't want to be caught have this instead and that's why i say that ash has regressed again because he isn't battling anymore i think everyone's mentioned to him at some point you should battle it and then catch it and he just hasn't remembered any of this he's just like no i'm so good i'm just going to throw the ball straight at it and that'll work first time and then team rocket appear to team rocket because that's what Team Rocket do. They have to turn up and do what they do. And they... They motto. Yeah, but they say how they're going to become these big important people and rule the world because they caught one Pikachu. And it's like, so Team Rocket, catch one Pikachu, rule the world. It's like, no, I don't think that really works like that. It's like a super powerful Pikachu because it has blown up buildings before. I suppose it has been supercharged because of all the torch that Ash has put Pikachu through. He's not a very nice person, if I'm honest. He doesn't learn from his mistakes and he just torches his Pokemon. And then one of my favourite things in this episode is when Mankey has got the hat on and it's flipping the hat back and pretending to be Ash. I think that's great. Ash gets so angry in this episode, it makes me really happy because Ash just deserved to be tormented. Gets his come up with of being dumb child. And then Ash becomes a little gremlin and starts trying to climb a tree. But he can't because he's dumb child. And then he's thinking about how the hat is from the pokemon league but the pokeball in the advert for the pokemon league says pokemon league without the e and i don't know whether that was a, a spelling error or what but it just doesn't say it doesn't say pokemon league it says pokemon league without the e but ash is such a, a fan of pokemon but doesn't know anything about them like he says what's a manky there are 150 of them surely if he's that much of a fan of pokemon he would have been able to learn 150 of them i reckon he has short-term memory loss He's got to have something stopping him from progressing. Ash doesn't learn Pokemon. Surely if you're going to go out 
on an adventure to catch them all maybe learn them they know that they exist because the pokedex tells him so why not go through the pokedex at one point instead he just doesn't so every time he sees a pokemon he's like oh what's this thing and it's like you should know this stuff this is basic stuff that you should know you know you don't go hiking in the wilderness without supplies don't go on a pokemon adventure without the knowledge of the things you're trying to catch if you don't know what they are how do you know you're going to catch them all he's just a dumb child with memory loss problems I understand that he doesn't know what they are for the audience, that the audience can also say, who's that Pokemon? But, like, I really do think he should know some Pokemon, at least. He shouldn't be amazed by a Pokemon. It's great. I still can't get over his excitement at just a Pokemon. (laughs) Just like he's never seen one before. I think the thing I really like about Mankey is because of how much it does to Ash and just winds him up. A little wind-up monkey. I do think he's got away with so much stuff in the past couple episodes and it's it's good to have a pokemon who isn't just standing still and letting him throw a ball at it i think this is only the third time he's caught a pokemon he caught caterpie pidgeotto crabby okay so this is the fourth pokemon he's caught half of his pokemon have walked to him and said okay i'm gonna join you now bulbasaur just joined him charmander just joined him squirtle just joined him pikachu was sort of given as a start <laughs> But he legitimately caught Caterpie, Pidgeotto, Krabby, and now Primeape. Which is such a weird choice. What's wrong with Primeape? I don't know. I just I forgot that he has a Primeape. I have a feeling he's only going to come out for comedic effect. He's not going to be used in battles very often. That's my prediction. One of my favourite bits is shortly after this, and um, it's when Primeape launches Jessie, and her face is plants into a boulder <laughs> like a missile. I just think that's really funny. Yeah, at some point between these things, James has kicked Mankey in the face and made it so angry it evolved into Primeape. Okay, it's, it's hard to explain the plot of this episode because there is nothing to this episode. The plot literally is. They see a Mankey, Team Rocket appear, they run away, they catch the Mankey. That is the plot. <laughs> Even in that short summary, you forgot it evolves into Primeape. Yeah, I suppose. It becomes a bigger Mankey. This episode's incredibly simple. Like All the stuff that happens is so basic that it's easy to forget what order they happened in. <laughs> There's a lot of nothing to this episode. <laughs> Even the place they're in is a nothing place. It's just the path between towns. It's like a rocky road. It's not got any real wildlife or anything. It's just an open, almost like a savanna, but it's just an empty space. An empty space like the inside of Ash's head. It's like they didn't really write a plot for this episode, and then suddenly they were like, guys, the episode goes out tomorrow. They're like, no, no, what do we do? Okay, what does he need to do in this episode? He needs to go from this place to this place. Okay, he goes there. Okay, what what else do we do? Uh, He can catch a Pokemon. He can catch this one. Okay, so what can we do with this? It can chase them all, all the way to where they need to go. Okay, that'll do. That'll do. That's the episode. Is there much else really to discuss? I've got a couple more points. So, you're supposed to not lock her prime up in the eye, but the camera just stares at its crotch instead. That's one thing. And then the next one is that you've got to give credit to Team Rocket for their digging skills, because they just dashed ahead by a little bit, and then they've dug a fairly big hole. And then my last point is that it's kind of pointless that Ash sends out each Pokemon to do one attack against Primeape. Like, he has a Pidgeotto. Pidgeotto is a flying type. Flying is good against fighting. But instead, he just sends out Bulbasaur, Charmander, well, Bulbasaur, Squirtle, and Charmander to do one attack with some stock footage on Primeape. And on a whim, Charmander can learn Rage. Is Rage a move or an ability? I don't think the Pokedex made it very clear. It's a move, but he wouldn't just use it. Ash would have to say, use Rage. I could have sworn it said, like, Charmander's Rage ability or something. I think it did, but it just, it means a move. Yeah, it's a move. It's the more it gets attacked, your attack stat increases with every hit. I mean, it's a normal type move. <laughs> normal, which is weak against fighting. I don't know how effective it would be on Mankey. Primate. I don't care. Wait, but this means that Ash's Charmander has to be level... 22 or 19 depending on the generation so it should have already evolved which means that ash is an awful trainer because he hasn't got his charm under to evolve yet despite it being over leveled this is conclusive evidence i've i'm done with my notes i had so little notes for this episode because there's nothing to it i've got quite a lot of nothing notes just like small things that don't really mean anything stuff like some heavenly music plays when meowth gets a ball of wool because that's a cat joke so many filler jokes. I also mentioned that the hat has more backstory than Ash himself. There isn't an episode. It's filled with jokes. That's all it is. It's just one joke after another. The the joke is, oh, Maggie's so mad. Don't look him in the eyes. She's so mad. Oh, you looked him in the eyes. Oh, no. 
that is the plot of the episode and it's like uh, it's so dumb and uh i like the episode like i like the idea of prime ape and him being this m- angry little person and i like manky manky's adorable i don't like prime ape manky is adorable i like manky a lot i have to hate prime ape on principle i like Mankey's personality. Mankey's kind of playful, and then Primate just isn't playful and is just angry. Primate's just annoying. Primate's just going to be a joke character of haha, I beat up Ash every time I come out of the Pokeball. This isn't one of the stronger episodes. No, it's not. So, if you were to give this a rating out of 10, what would you give it? I don't want to rate an episode. I think what I mean is, like, filler episodes are five. It's fine. It does the thing. But this is like, you know, there are filler episodes that serve a point, like a couple episodes we've had where things happen. But this episode, it does it what it needs to do. And it is essentially filler, but it does it in a bad way. It takes this one joke and stretches it out over the entire episode. And it's, just, it's not funny. It's one joke after another, filling time, time-wasting just to fill the episode up to the point where he catches the primate. It's a whole lot of nothing. It's donuts, 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 donuts. Oh, now it's angry at me. That's pretty much the jokes of these episodes, that, oh, these donuts are great. That's not even a joke. In the Japanese version, it wouldn't have been a joke, but in the English one, it's a joke that they're not donuts, but just, it's donuts, there's this thing, run away from the thing, catch the thing. Here we are, we're where we need to be. There is a whole lot of just buying time. This is the Pokemon. We avoid it for a while, then we catch it. Well, they chase it for a while, then they get chased by it for a while, then they fight it and catch it. At the end, the Pokeball catches the Primeape, and then it starts wobbling again, and then it catches it again. And that's just a metaphor for the whole episode of it's just the same thing again and again and again to buy time. I, I'm done with this episode now. We have to pick favourite things. My favourite thing is Mankey, because Mankey's really cute, it's got a little snout, it's adorable, and it also just picks on Ash, which is fantastic. I agree. Mankey is the best thing in this episode. All the stuff with Mankey at the beginning was nice, it was cute, it was funny. I liked seeing Ash get top but then when it when it evolved and it just carried on going and became prime ape which i have to hate it just kept going the stuff with with monkey is kind of adorable it would have been great to have a little bit of time where they're traveling and every once in a while they just see this monkey on the on the top of the hill or like around the corner or in a tree hiding from them and then they're trying to be friends and then it steals Ash's hat and runs away and they've got to go and chase it down or if they just keep trying to set up traps and they keep failing like Wally Coyote and Roadrunner. And then a trap succeeds and they get the hat back and then it evolves because it's annoyed and it becomes them running away from Mankey would be a lot more interesting from them being these people who are trying to catch this Pokemon to the Pokemon trying to catch them to get the hat back. And then Ash realises, you know, he's got to catch this Pokemon because it's strong, it's powerful, it, it's a, a fighting type, it's something I haven't got yet. You know, I can I could get this for my team, it'd be a really good benefit instead of this thing that happens. It's just on autopilot. I didn't really like it that much. It was simple. It was pointless. Why has Ash got to be so incompetent? It shouldn't take an entire episode to catch a Pokemon. It takes like two minutes in the games, not 22 minutes. The second episode we're watching is Princess Karaoke. Ty and Joe disprove our only two to a pedalo theory and find a fancy castle with frantic Gekomon and Otamamon running around at the beck and call of the princess, who is, of course, Mimi. The Gekomon's leader, Shogun Gekomon, has been asleep for 300 years, and only Mimi has the voice to sing a song, a song to wake him up. She uses this to blackmail everyone into waiting on her hand and foot, as she indulges in the luxury lifestyle she's dreamed of. She kicks out her friends that tried to get her to leave, and then locks them up when they come back to try and trick her into singing, Palmon included. That night, Mimi has a horrible nightmare, and she realises that she's been a spoiled brat, thanks to Sora. Mimi wakes up Shogun Gekomon, who gets up on the wrong side of the bed and promptly starts destroying everything, until Togemon digivolves to Metal Greymon to defeat him. That must be what happened, right? Because it was definitely Togemon's ultimate Digivolution episode, right? Digimon, Digimon Monsters, Digimon Art of Champions. Digimon, Digimon Monsters, Digimon... So you can tell pretty much from the start that it's going to be Mimi because they go into a castle or it's a palace and it's got pink things everywhere. And, you know, not to stereotype, but that is kind of Mimi's thing, pink and and luxury and stuff. And Mimi's the only one left besides Sora who we've just seen hiding in the background. I suppose, yeah. Unless they find Kari. Who? So I don't know about you, but like Mimi looks really cool in that dress, mostly because her cowboy thing to me looks a bit weird i liked her hair as well i don't really see her without her hat on unless she's naked 
So it's good to see her in a different outfit that isn't naked. We don't see her naked, like, ever. We see her and Sora bathing and then Gomamon swims past in the Devimon episode. Oh yeah, you're right. We've seen her without a hat when she's been having a bath twice. Yeah, so it's nice to see her without her hat on and without her usual outfit. It's cool. It looks a little uncomfortable. But it's pretty. And we discover that she's living there as a princess because reasons what why else would, what else would she be doing in this world i would love to have seen her become almost feral like she's become kind of wild and she's hunting for things herself and she's a bit crazed i think that would have been a good character development for for mimi she's gone like, you know what sod this i cannot deal with this world anymore palmon's abandoned her and gone searching for help because she needs help and mimi's like made a, a guru on skin suit to wear <laughs> and she's living in like a tree house and she's attacking things as they go past and defending her territory you would love that i would love an episode like that you would love an episode where mimi just acts like a dog no but an episode where mimi has out of everybody embraced this world for what it is decided sod this i can't deal with being in this crazy world it's all insane i would better go insane i don't want to see mimi be feral i don't think it would be a very <laughs> good episode you wouldn't want to see her trying to attack Ty. It'd be horrifying. And then, like, seeing them both, and then getting really angry, being like, where have you guys been? Ty, where did you go? Everything's gone wrong. What do we do? Everybody's disappeared. This world is insane. No. <laughs> it would have been good to see Mimi adjust to this world. She has adjusted to this world. She's adjusted to it by becoming the princess of these Digimon. She's adapted it to her lifestyle. Yeah, like, but then the guys get really annoyed at her and insult her because she's being selfish. And to be honest, like, the Gekumon have selfish reasons themselves. Shogunmon, who is Shogun Gekumon, not Shogunmon, lost a singing competition and decided to go into a coma. I'm just saying that's a little bit dramatic. So what they need is they need Mimi to sing. And she's actually got a really good singing voice, even if the song itself is awful. Oh, the lyrics are the best. Yeah, Mimi seems to have become this stuck-up, needy person who wants all of these things. And everybody seems to hate Mimi for it. And personally, I'm on Mimi's side because she didn't choose to be dragged to the digital world. She's in a place where she has no idea about the world or the rules of the world. She doesn't want to be there. She's made it quite clear that she wants to go home. We've had that episode with Izzy before where she had that breakdown and ran into the maze she doesn't want to be in this place so she's by herself and she's not in a negative way but i feel like mimi's the sort of person who has been waited on all her life she's an only child so i imagine her parents giving her a hundred percent of their attention because they absolutely adore their daughter and then they love to buy her all these things and that's why she's so into dresses and clothes and shoes because she gets to go with you know maybe her mom or dad you know to shopping centres and they go, you know, pick something you want because they absolutely adore this child who's an an amazing, really bubbly, really happy person. And she has all of that taken away from her to a place where there are monsters trying to kill her. And now, somehow, she's found a way to a palace where she's required to do something for them. And she could say no. She'd say, no, I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. Instead, they say, okay, come and do this thing for us so we can wake our leader up. She says, yes, I'll do that. And then she tries, but she fails because of something. And then they decide to give her lots of food. She didn't ask for this banquet that they gave to her. She's like, oh, thank you. That's really nice. So they try again. That's another mistake. And then she says, oh, could I get this whilst I'm waiting here? And it escalates and escalates and escalates. And while she's not innocent in this, she shouldn't be the only one being called out for acting this way. You know, the gecko man are filling every single request because they want their leader to wake up. A leader who is an awful Digimon. I don't get why he needed to be woken up because all he does is attack people. But, you know, she's gone from surviving in this world and spending, if we listen to what Izzy said, you know, a couple months by herself wandering this digital world where there are monsters and creatures trying to destroy her and kill her and, you know, cause her harm. And then she finds this one little safe haven where people are willing to wait on her. I mean, I'd happily stay there. If it means if I've got to sing a song to a sleepy frog, but in the meantime, I'm being waited on hand of foot, I might be tempted to just stretch it out a little bit longer because it's not quite right yet. Because as soon as she sings that song and he wakes up, 
you know, there's a chance that she's going to get kicked to the curb and sent away. But at the moment, she's being treated really well. And, you know, good for her. If she can do this and find this loophole and ex- exploit these Digimon who are going to exploit her just the same. Good. Go for it, Mimi. I'm glad she did that. But it shouldn't be that the guys call her out and say she's an awful person for doing these things when, you know, they would do the same thing if they were in her situation. Well, I don't know how Ty would look in a dress. I don't know. He could tie his hair back into a man bun. The fan art will be out there somewhere. Uh, sorry about that little rant. I just, I like Mimi. I think she's a lovely person and she is the way she is because of who she is and she shouldn't feel bad for it. And that's why, like, chapter two of Try is one of, is my favourite bit of it, of, of it so far because of her, her storyline that she goes through. Because that really focuses on people calling her out for being who she is and she should just stick to her guns and be who she is because you know that's who she is she shouldn't lie and be someone different she should just be herself but she is a bit of a how is she well she gets incredibly angry at them she stops listening to a palman who's her best friend in this world i could see her being angry at ty and joe because they essentially left her alone ty left she can be angry at Ty for leaving, not for too long, but I, I could see her being angry at him because she just disappeared and when he disappeared, the group split up. Who left first? Was it Sora left first and then... I think it was Mimi. I think they probably left in the order that we found them in. Yeah, maybe. She's just really angry. I, I can understand why. You know, she's she's found this little safe haven for herself and there's a potential that this safe haven's going to crumble around her. And yeah, she does act a little bit spoiled, but... I think it's justified. Yeah, she's allowed to like this life of luxury that she's got now, but she's still being really selfish and rude and shouting at her friends. I mean, what she's doing isn't right. I I, I understand that. But I do feel like there are other people doing bad things in these episodes and they don't get called out on it the way she does. She's a bit whiny still. She's demanding, certainly demanding. Yeah, definitely demanding. Also spoiled. So she refuses to sing, okay. That's fine. And then Ty begins to sing and Joe sings and they're both really bad and they both need auto-tune. They're all really bad at singing, but it's so funny. I don't know whether it was intentional or not, but I feel like their type of singing matches their personality quite well. Like, Ty's is just a burst of really bad, loud noise. And then Joe's is monotonous but sort of calculated, like he's keeping on tune, and it matches their personality in a nice way. It just makes his lyrics really specific. So then Mimi has a fight with Palmon, and calls Palmon a spoiled brat, which, you know, that's too far, but I feel like Mimi is having another panic. So she's just lashing out at Palmon because after everybody left, this monster, which she's known for not too long, is her only safe point. And I feel like she just lashed out at her because she had no idea how to respond because of the situation she's in. I do think it got out of hand before she realised how bad it was. And now Mimi's in this situation. She just doesn't know how to deal with it. She could try listening to people. That's the best way. She goes to sleep in a huff and has this really convoluted dream with Sora. Like, how does Dream Sora know that this is going to sort Mimi out? I think it's supposed to be real Sora. But real Sora takes the credit for the dream. She's like, yes, I gave Mimi this dream so that she learnt a lesson. It was all me. Then she realises that, you know, she has been bad. She's been quite demanding and not very nice to her friends. So she goes and apologises, which is okay. But I also feel like maybe the Gekamon should have apologised to her. Or maybe everybody else should have apologised to her. At least one that said, you know, we're sorry that we called you names. Or we're sorry that we've tried to use you to get you to do something selfish for us. But no, Mimi has to apologise. Well, she was really selfish and spoiled and exploitative. It's because she did the worst thing doesn't mean what they did wasn't bad either. She did basically blackmail them. Yeah, but they were offering this stuff in the first place so that she could sing. Yeah, but she did blackmail them. She she was bad and what she did was bad. She was very naughty. I don't know. I don't like insulting Mimi because I like Mimi. I don't know why, because so far every Mimi episode's been pretty bad. I think there's more depth to her and more of a thought process to her. I think there's supposed to be, but the dub doesn't do it. So she gets up, apologises to everybody. And then she sings a song. <laughs> to wake up Shogun Mon. With slightly tweets lyrics explaining how she learned her lesson. Shogun Mon wakes up and is angry for no reason. I don't get why you're trying to spend so long waking up this Digimon 
for it to wake up and just want to kill people. Well, I don't think they expected it to be so grumpy, because it's been 300 years, you think he'd have cooled off a bit. And then Palmon evolves into Togemon, and Togemon in this episode is the best. When she's comforting Mimi, she's sort of right next to her, and... You get the creepiest screenshot. I know, but Togemon is so careful and kind, because obviously Togemon is a cacti with sharp, sharp pins. Well, a cactus. A cacti, yeah. No, a cacti is a plural of cactus. Togemon is not multiple cacti. No, Togemon is multiple cactus. Togemon is just a cactus. No, it's multiple cactus. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Togemon is a cactus. Lots of Togemons are cacti. (laughs) It's four cacti stacked on top of each other. No, it's not. It's a living cactus. I made a mistake with my words. Cacti is the main character of the series. But yeah, like, Togemon's wonderful and really caring, and, and even though she's pointy and sharp it has the scariest smile ever togemon leaning over mimi and you get a close-up of the face and the hollow dead eyes and mouth just smiling at you are terrifying eh, it's not that terrifying look at it i have it's it's good it's just leering over you with its empty soul so it's still cool i like it it's a creepy cactus then instead of togemon evolving greyman evolves into metal greyman Again, which isn't as impactful this time. It wasn't impressive. It was like, oh, oh yeah. She's like, why not Togemon? Which is okay, because I know the Togemon Evolution episode's quite good. Yeah, it'll be better, but really, it breaks the pattern unnecessarily. But Mimi's a girl. She can't have her ultimate evolution yet. Ty's got to have his again. Dinosaurs are cooler. Well, all the boys need to have theirs done first. So Matt's got to have his, then Joe's got to have his. TK is a younger kid, so it doesn't really count. We will have to wait to see what Togemon becomes. Well, Togemon's already the best at the moment, so nothing can beat Togemon. I think it's more just like Mimi being soppy isn't cool enough for it to be evolution episode material. She's got to be brave. So then Metal Greymon defeats Shogunmon, and is it dead? Because after you see like the little tail bit, sticking out of a pile of rubble so it's not being deleted so what happened with it have previous digimon they've killed been deleted yes i can't think of it happening very often i don't think that digimon in this series dematerialize okay but even if they're not that means there's a corpse in a pile of rubble and they're just joking whilst looking at the dead body and the gecko man aren't concerned that their friend is evil now because he's dead now it was kind of a wasted effort to bring him back from his sleep the episode had to end okay just move on (laughs) any more thoughts about this episode when they were trying to trick mimi into singing they were using a a recorder where do you find a recorder in the digital world (laughs) In the recorder shop, which will probably be in a cave somewhere, because why not Digital World? They just conveniently have one. It's fine. I don't think they have any Brock in the group either, with the magic bag. It's for plot purposes, it's okay. It doesn't make sense, it shouldn't be there. Because where do you get a karaoke set and a microphone? (laughs) I suppose this would be the place to find it, in the castle full of musical Digimon. Oh well, they had spotlights as well. They had a whole lot of Earth technology. Yeah, because it's the digital world, why not? Other things I didn't like. There was a lot of repeated footage when the Gekomon and the Otamamon were introduced. There was so much running, just again and again, and that was just lazy. And the last thing is that we get a shot of Tai and Joe and Agumon and Gobamon all on one pedalo, which disproves that you can only have one person and one Digimon per pedalo, which confirms that Matt did not need to leave TK behind, making Matt abandoning him entirely his own decision. Making Matt the worst. It's just been proven that Matt is the worst, and that everything with TK being left alone was just completely redundant and stupid. So we can hate Matt even more. Yes, well, I think he's kind of awful anyway. Favourite thing? I'm going to say Palmon. Okay, mine was Togemon. Well, mine's Palmon because Palmon is the good character out of that pairing. I don't like Mimi, but Palmon speaks sense. And Palmon in that dress is quite good. She's got a little dress similar to Mimi's. I just like how Palmon just tries to knock sense into Mimi whenever she's being dumb. Because the writers try and make her dumb, and then Palmon's like, No, I will save you, Mimi. Be a good character, please. Also, when Palmon's behind bars, it looks like she can just slip between them anyway. Probably. Or she can get the keys with a poison ivy. No, she's just sleek enough to fit between the bars. So, it's kind of pointless. I think my runner-up favourite thing has to be the singing and the dancing, though. Because that was hilarious. 
It was it was good. It was fun. Anyway, overall thoughts. It's an okay episode. I think it's the best Mimi episode yet, even though it's still a pretty bad episode. Yeah, I do feel it's unfair the way they're one-sided towards her, even though she's not the only one doing bad things. I think some of it's justified. It does get taken a bit too far, and she does become quite demanding. I think Ty and Joe are thinking about the big picture, whereas Mimi's just thinking about herself at that point. Also, her crest is the crest of sincerity, and she's not being sincere. Well, she's being sincere. She's finally being honest about how much of an idiot she's been. I think she's not being sincere to herself. Like, she's not being the person she wants to be. She's become this needy, selfish, awful person. Yeah, and then she stops. That's what the whole apology and confession thing at the end of the episodes about and that's when she starts like she realizes that she is it's annoying that every mimi episode also has her being accompanied by swarms of green slimy digimon that want to worship her can we have a mimi episode without green slimy digimon please we will eventually one day now it's time for mono Away mono where we talk about the similarities and differences in these episodes so let's start with our monster of the week. My monster of the week is Krabby. Okay. Because Krabby's clever and it knows that it needs to stay with Professor Oak in order to avoid my hate. And also it's just cool. I like Krabby when it has its little interactions with Oak and it steers clear of Ash. I, I like that little relationship they've got. It's adorable. It knows how bad Ash is. Krabby is doing exactly what I would do in the series. I would just stay away from Ash and hang out with all the cool Pokemon back at the lab. My monster is Princess Palmon, because Digimon in clothes is the cutest thing. Patamon is still cuter than Palmon, though. Yeah, definitely. Can you imagine Patamon in one of those little sweaters you can get for dogs or cats? It'd be a little tube. So, which episode do you think had the best storyline? Digimon. Pokemon was... There wasn't really a storyline. Digimon was a bit bad but it's just that's because of personal preference like i wasn't a massive fan of how they were towards mimi but then that's just a dub thing and it is kind of justified you did sort of justify the way she is to me and you did understand why she was being bad there's a lot of people just being bad similarities we need to say why pokemon's was worse because there isn't a storyline there's a pokemon that's it it just goes a to b and fills the time for 20 minutes they literally run away from the plot. Okay, similarities. I have got practically nothing apart from there were characters with hats. That's literally the only similarity I could come up with. These episodes are so wildly different. Well, my theme this episode is running away from things. Mimi runs away from her responsibilities and all the kids run away from Banky slash Primeape. No, it's expectations are living up to them because Ash is expected to be a trainer and catch Pokemon, something he hasn't done in a while. And then he gets told about it by Professor Oak and it gives him that little boost of, oh yeah, I'm supposed to be doing this thing that he catches Primeape. And Mimi is expected to sing to awaken Shogunmon, but it's something she does, but she also becomes demanding and something that the guys think is something they ex- expect she would do. But she also becomes snarky and, and mean towards everybody because of that. And that's expectations. As you said, there there isn't a lot in common with this episode. It's people just running away from things. It was two people who were supposed to do a thing and then failing to live up to those expectations and then overcoming that and then living up to those. Which episode did you enjoy the most? Digimon. Yeah, me too. I like this episode a little bit. It had more to it than Pokemon and was also funnier because of the bad singing and dancing. And the jokes weren't the entire episode. (laughs) Yeah, it's not the one joke. There was more complexity to it. It wasn't just, oh, we need to wake up this thing. It was, we need to wake this thing up. But also Mimi's here and also the other two are here now, which means that the story's progressing. And also she's kind of gone off on on some sort of thing. How do we solve this to solve this to solve this? So Digimon gets the point, which means the score is 13-12 to Pokemon. Join us again next time where we'll be watching episode 26. Sora's Crest of Love and Pokemon Sensation. You can listen to more of us on SoundCloud, iTunes or Stitcher where we like getting reviews and comments. And you can message us via our Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, with the world thread and email which are all linked in the show notes. Thank you for listening. Bye bye. 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 Butterfree. I knew you were going to do it.
what's this Pokemon? Well, it's who's that Pokemon, isn't it? Unless it's the knockoff brand. <laughs> Who is this Pokemon? <laughs> what is this pocket monster before me? I'm gonna sing a song. A song to wake you up. <laughs> or not. Uh, and when you hear my voice. You know I'm gonna say this. I don't this. know the I'm, words. I'm gonna use this as my alarm in the morning. <laughs> And every morning I can wake up and just die a little inside. <laughs> Metal Greymon evolves. No, Greymon evolves. That's what I said. You said Metal Greymon evolves. Greymon is metal, okay? He's so metal. Greymon becomes metal. It's time for you to wake up! <laughs> uh, you you yeah, should Ty's get that song. Just get the bit of Ty singing, it's time for you to wake up, and make that your alarm sound. I think I should. I think it, it would work because it's so horrific and screechy. <laughs> anyway, overall thoughts. No, I said overall thoughts. I said overall so thoughts. I need your th- no, but I said it I first. I said second. <laughs> uh, 